Celia. I'm, I was asked by, by um, a fellow artist to do kind of a tutorial on how to paint and blend a sky with some clouds. Um, she was working on something and was meeting some trouble with the blending with acrylics. So I thought I would start um, first by introducing kind of what I use for supplies. I use a canvas board. This is an 11 by 14. Um, I use for blending. I use these uh, one and a half inch, I thought they were two inch, but they're one and a half inch um, soft bristled brushes. It's kind of like hair. Um, for applying the sky color and for blending also, I use this, um, I think it's a one, maybe one and a quarter or one inch, and then this three quarter inch. And as you can see, I don't know if you can see, but the, um, the bristles have been all smushed out in there. So this brush I have squished down. Um, as I use it, I kind of smash it into the, the palette so that the bristles spread out. The junkier a brush, usually the better textures you get out of it. So these are the brushes that I primarily use. Um, and then I have a couple that are, um, I think, half or three quarter inch. One of them is more straight. These brushes are actually identical, but one of them is more smushed than the other one. So I try to keep one fairly smooth. Um, for paints, I just use these Apple Barrel. Um, they're like 59 cents. They're less than a dollar. You can get them basically at any craft store. You can get them at Michael's. You can get them at the craft section at Walmart, any place. Um, so these are the paints that I use. What's expensive is not always better, and actually I prefer these because they, the colors are more vivid. So um, those are that's kind of a rundown of the materials that I use. I don't use any blending or mixing mediums. I just use the canvas, the paints, the brushes, and water, so I like to keep it very simple. Okay, since this is just going to be just a sky, um, I'm not focusing too much on a lot of color variations. I'm just going to keep it as simple as possible. Um, I've got the colors that I'm using. This one is China Blue. It's almost white. It's a very pale, pale blue. I'm going to use that primarily for the clouds and the mist or, you know, what. And then for my sky color, I want it to kind of be a dark sky so you can see the contrast um, more easily. So I've mixed. This is Craft Smart. I got this at uh, Michael's and it's peacock blue and then this one is the apple barrel admiral blue and then um, for the very top I want it to be as dark as possible and then get lighter as we go down to the horizon so to kind of gray out the dark blue I've added some burnt umber so I don't do any prep to the canvas um, I don't wet it I don't do anything I just start slopping on paint so I'm going to start by dampening my brush and I'm going to get rid of most of the water from the brush so that it's just sort of damp. And then um, I'm going to get just a little bit of brown and mix it in with some blue to kind of get a dark, a dark, dark uh, blue. And then I, I, I have to plan out where I want my light and where I want my dark and all of that. So. Um, what I do is I just start crisscrossing, not enough paint. Be very generous with your paint amounts because you want this to stay wet for as long as possible and acrylics dry very fast. So you want to make sure that you get plenty of paint on your brush and really apply it very thick. So I've moved into just the blue mixture with no brown in it. And I'm doing, I'm just using crisscross, like an X strokes to kind of just apply some blue here and there. And I'm leaving some light spots um, around so that um, the contrast of the clouds versus the sky will show up much better. So I'm going to rinse that brush. I don't want any dark left on it at all when I go into the lighter color. Um, so. I'm going to um, mix some of my China Blue 
with a little bit of the um, with a little bit of the original um, the two blues that are mixed with no brown in them and I'm going to kind of bring some of this down to the horizon so that it gets a little lighter as it goes down and I wipe if I go if I start with a light color and I blend up into the dark, I catch that dark on my brush. So I, I keep paper towels handy and when I blend from light to dark, I wipe the dark off before I go back again because otherwise I bring dark down into my light and I don't want to do that. So just add some of this. All right. So for the light color, I want these to kind of overlap just at the edges. So I've gone in a little further than I want the light color to go because I want to be able to blend it out later. And the light is really the one you have to get lots and lots of it on there. Get it on there as thick as you possibly can. So right now I'm just placing my colors where kind of where they belong um, and then the blending will come a little bit later but as you crisscross these together you get all these different values in here and that's going to come in handy later when you go to blend this and it'll give it a more natural kind of a fluffy cloud look and I can kind of add some in over here. Don't make, don't worry too much about it looking like clouds off the get-go because you're going to go back in with your blending brushes and soften these streaks and edges. Okay. Now I'm going to rinse that brush and set it aside. For blending, you want dry, dry, dry brushes. I cannot stress that word enough. Make sure there is no water at all in the brushes you use to blend. I'm going to flip my paper towels so that there's a dry surface here because I'm going to need to use them to wipe the paint off of the brush as I blend. That's an important step and you have to work really quickly because like I said acrylics dry very fast. So I'm going to start here in the dark and I'm going to kind of just use swooping motions, crisscrosses, a few little circles, very light, light pressure because you don't want, um, you don't want brush strokes and again the softer the brush the smoother this is going to be and you want it to be very, like I said, very light, light pressure. So. After I blend the darker blue, I'm going to start working from the lighter stuff out, and you want very soft, soft, soft pressure. See how beautifully soft that cloud looks? You just want, just like Bob Ross always said, my painting hero, three hairs and some air. Just barely, barely touching that canvas to blend those clouds. Use little circles use little crisscrosses, fluff those clouds any direction you want them to go. And again, keep wiping your brush clean because you want, um, you want, you don't want to drag the dark into the light. You want the light values to stay where they're at. So always work from light to dark and then always wipe your brush between each little section that you do. And again, the key is to work extremely quickly and get it done as fast as you can because you don't want them to dry. You want them to stay open. You want that open time to last as long as possible so that these paints are still movable. Um, once they stop being movable, blending is virtually impossible. So work fast. See, this is still a little bit too wet. You can tell because of the streaks that are still in it. So I'm going to try and find an area that's starting to, to dry a little more. And you want to just work, work around the edges um, where the light meets the dark. You can use just the corner of the brush and do little circles. You can tap it and then do little circles. 
just, I mean, really, any direction you want to do this is completely up to you. It's just a matter of working this paint and softening those hard lines and edges and those brush strokes to get those clouds to look soft and velvety. That's, that's the goal. That's what we're after is that soft, um, almost misty look. Um, this is just one way to do clouds. My clouds very rarely ever have hard edges or hard poofs on them. Um, my kids call them the mashed potato clouds. I don't do those very often because I can't make them work for me in my paintings. And so I like the soft because I've developed this technique that works really well for me. And I have a lot of fun just making these really soft just work the colors if you find a spot that's too dark like I don't like how this spots light and then it goes dark and there's a line there so what I'll do is I'll go down here and grab some of that extra light color and I'll just sort of change the shape of that and just keep working in circles wipe your brush And remember, soft, soft, soft pressure. Um, and then I like to kind of feather and fluff this bottom where it's going to be toward the horizon. I kind of drag the colors down and then drag them with firm pressure straight across so that it kind of feathers out the paint so there's no hard lines when I add the horizon in later. So that is how I do my cloud. Okay, so for this section, um, I want to do just a few little highlights on these clouds to make them look um, more more 3D than they do. Um, it's been about five minutes. My canvas is almost completely dry. There's still some wet spots on it, but nothing too bad. I want to use this three-quarter inch brush. I have dampened it with just a little bit of water. Um, it's just barely wet. So as I did, I, I dipped it, and then I got as much of the water out as I could with the paper towel. Um, I've added some white gesso to my palette, but other than that, the colors are really aren't changing. So the color that I used for this part, I'm going to dip into a little bit of that and then pull some white gesso and kind of mix that and then I just want to touch the corner of my brush in my water just to soften that just a little bit. Um, if it's too soft, like if it's too runny, there will be bubbles in it when you stir it. So if there's bubbles, grab some more gesso and add it because you don't want bubbles. So I'm going to squish, again, I'm going to squish that brush down into the palette to spread those out. And I'm going to get rid of a little bit of the extra extra paint that was on my brush. I had a little too much. And now I've got too little. Okay, so I'm going to use the, the top corner of the brush to kind of add some white fluff to the top of these. Um, and I will blend it in a little bit better um, in a minute. But right now I want to just add, add the white fluff. And then we'll blend it and soften it in just a minute. So I'm using little tiny circle little tiny circle mo motion. So I put the brush on the canvas and just sort of circle it around like that. Just wherever you see where the top of a cloud or the side of a cloud that sticks out, just wherever you think some white needs to go. I need just a little bit more water. I almost dipped it in my coconut water that I'm drinking. That's what it means. Okay. Um, if it starts to act like it's not wanting to spread onto the canvas, if it's kind of sticky, um, just add just a touch more water um, and mix it into the paint. So right now I'm just doing soft little curly shapes um, to just add a few highlights here and there to the clouds. Okay. 
Now I'm going to rinse rinse all of that out of my brush and again I want to get as much water out of there as possible um, because I don't for then this next part I do need a fairly dry brush but I do need just enough water in inside the brush to kind of push that paint around now I'm going to take the whole flat surface of this brush and put it against the board and do soft little circles too much water. If if you start to see streaks being pulled, that means you've got too much water in the brush. You want just enough to move the paint, but not enough to not enough to to smear it. Because I want to just soften what's there. I don't want to drag it around. See how soft that makes that look. If you find some hard edges, like I don't know if the camera can pick that up, but my eye sees a hard edge between this highlight and that, so I just softened it. Um, I don't like hard edges in my clouds. So, and the more you work this and the more you tap it on the paper towel, um, the drier that brush is going to get, and actually the, the better that is, because it means you can push a little harder and still get the same effect. So I'm just dragging this brush in little circles to kind of smooth out smooth out what I just did and that's how I add highlights.